Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. Hey, don't forget, July the 11th through the 13th, Ardmore, Oklahoma, Ardmore Convention Center, Preterist Pilgrim Weekend. Our theme this year is how to know we are not living in the last days. You don't want to miss this, okay? Now, it will be live streamed. Tom Mills is going to be here to do that. Um, unfortunately, Chad Keno could not be with us uh, as he was last year, but Tom is more than capable of, of taking his place, and we appreciate that a great deal, and I know that you do. So I hope that you will plan on being with us in person or most assuredly watching live stream video. Now, we'll need your help again, okay? We're going to offer it free, but obviously it's not free for us to offer it. So please keep that in mind as the date approaches of how you can help us out uh, to provide that service for you. Uh, and while we are on that, all right, uh, I need to ask that you please give some very serious consideration to supporting Preterist Research Institute on a regular basis. We, uh, as I told you at the close of last year, we are running at a deficit every single month. Now, I don't have to tell you that's not good, okay? Here on YouTube, we have close to 4,400 subscribers. You know, if each one of those subscribers were to send Preterist Research Institute a $10, $15, $20 monthly contribution, I would not have to ask for help and assistance. I hear from you on almost a daily basis, well, on a daily basis, of how much you, the viewers, appreciate these videos, these morning musings. Well, if you appreciate them, we would appreciate help from you so that we can continue to doing this and that we can even expand our outreach into the world. Uh, William called me up over the weekend, told me about a fantastic opportunity that has arisen that he has been offered, I'm being offered almost the same, but it will be a monthly expense that, to be quite honest about it, right now we are not capable of taking advantage. But with your help, and I will tell you more about it as I get more details, okay? With your help, we can walk through this fantastic door of opportunity with a potential audience of literally millions of people. This is a fantastic opportunity. So, let me ask you to please carefully and prayerfully consider supporting Preterist Research Institute on a monthly basis. Obviously, any contribution, even if it's one time, is greatly appreciated. And uh, you know, I've told you this before, I absolutely hate to even ask for support. But our ministry is supported by you. We have no other means of supporting our ministry. Our book sales are totally separate from the uh, tax exempt uh, aspect of our ministry. And so two totally different issues. But we need your help. I hope you'll prayerfully consider that. Okay. We are looking at the Olivet Discourse, whether or not it's a divided discourse of two events. The AD 70 judgment, the end of time, supposed a, a end of time coming. I'm sharing with you that the disciples asked about Christ's parousia and the end of the age. I've shared with you, most commentators say, well, that end of the age is the end of our current Christian age. We have demonstrated that cannot be true. The Christian age has no end. We've gone down through Matthew chapter 24 and shown 
where Jesus said, well, there are going to be wars, rumors of wars, famine, earthquake, peril. Now notice that he said these are the beginning of, of birth pangs. I've been talking about the birth pangs of Messiah, a well-known, a well-documented, an undeniable doctrine found in the Old Testament, found in the rabbinic writings about the last generation before the coming of the Lord, the judgment, and the resurrection. And Jesus is, was telling his audience, those disciples living right then and there, that they would see and experience those birth pangs. Now notice that Jesus then said, then they will deliver you up to persecution or to tribulation, Greek word thalipsis. The parallel in Mark chapter 13, they will deliver you up to councils, Greek word sanhedron or Sanhedria, and to synagogues. This is Jewish persecution of the followers of Christ. Now go back and watch the videos in which I point out that this absolutely falsifies the dispensational view that says during the time of the tribulation, it's Israel that's being persecuted. It's not the church. The church was removed, raptured from the earth. But here Jesus is talking to his disciples i.e. those who are, who are to be the church, saying it is they who would be persecuted. Then, <clears throat> clearly, Jesus is talking about events to happen in the lifetime of those first century disciples. I've shared with you, going all the way through the, the Galatian epistles, of the motif that they were, that first century generation was in fact experiencing the suffering, the tribulation that Jesus predicted. Now, if Jesus said that tribulation was part of the birth pangs and the first century church was experiencing the tribulation that was part of those birth pains, then it demands that the birth i.e. resurrection, judgment, parousia was to be in the lifetime of the generation that experienced the birth pains. Not 2,000 years later, let me remind you of Isaiah chapter 66, in which the Lord said, Shall I bring to the time of birth and not bring forth? shall I bring to the time of delivery and not produce? That's a hypothetical or rhetorical, I should say, question that demands a no. God was promising that when the birth pangs begin, pardon me, and at the, at, at the risk of redundancy, let me remind you that Paul in Romans chapter 8 said the whole creation groans in the birth pangs until now. That's Paul's now in 57 to 58 AD. They were in the midst of the birth pains, the birth pains that Jesus predicted in Matthew chapter 24. They were in the midst of it by being persecuted for the cause of Christ. Romans 8 verse 16, they were to rejoice because they were partakers of the sufferings of Christ. The birth pangs of Messiah. So once again, we find this motif <clears throat> of the suffering that was the birth pangs of Messiah being experienced by the first century church. So what do we find then? We find throughout the entirety of the New Testament, as I've already shared with you, the fact that they were destined to suffer we find the reality that they must, through much tribulation, enter the kingdom. Folks, that was written 2,000 years ago. They were suffering. They were to enter in, into the kingdom that was about to come. And so what we find throughout the New Testament, we find the motif of suffering and the promise of imminent vindication, imminent glory, 
at the coming of the Lord. After all, that was the Jewish narrative. That was the Old Testament narrative that in the last generation there would be a time of distress, there would be a time of tribulation that would purify the righteous and lead them into the kingdom, the judgment, the parousia, the resurrection. So we're going to continue this tomorrow, this week, sharing with you from the pages of the New Testament the first century suffering, as we've already seen, which was foretold, which was destined, but which would lead them directly to the imminent coming of the Lord and their vindication and their relief at the parousia. You don't want to miss it. By the way, you know, here we are almost at the end of April. April's very special book price is we shall meet him in the air, the wedding of the King of Kings, regularly $23.95 plus $4.95 postage. Your total delivered price, <clears throat> only a few days left here in April 2019, okay? Only a few days left. Your total delivered price, $19.95. Go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, banner right up at the top that will show you how to order. All right. <clears throat> Tomorrow morning, we're going to be sharing with you that motif, tribulation and suffering, the promise of imminent vindication, imminent relief at the coming of the Lord. You don't want to miss it, so I'll see you on the flip side.